You know, one of the things I learned growing up in the Kansas City Northland was to watch what you complain about. I, I used to hate giving directions to my home uh, because there was a, a, the major landmark to get to my home was the liquor store called the Happy Rock Liquor Store. I don't know if anybody here ever knew it. Let's just say it maybe wasn't like the nicest liquor store in Kansas City. So I always used to have to say, if you're headed north on North Oak, get to the Happy Rock Liquor Store, turn right two blocks, and there's my home. Hated, hated doing that. So when I was in high school, finally, after years and years and years, finally the Happy Rock Liquor Store closes down. And I was overjoyed, not going to have to give directions that way anymore ever again. And then six months later, it reopens as an adult bookstore. So if you know the place, <laughs> if you know the place in the Northland, just head there, turn right, and that's where I'm from. Uh, you know, there was a time in the mid-2000s when I was at a crossroads in, in life and, and deciding the direction I wanted to take and, and at the time was contemplating whether to run for a third term on the school board and possibly for the state house uh, or maybe focus on other pursuits. And what tipped the balance for me was um, the home right behind ours. We our, our, our neighbors right ac across the back fence line. Um, they were a three-income family. The father had two jobs. One of them was as a chef at one of the hotels in town. I, I forget what his what his day job was. Um, but the mother was a teacher. And unfortunately, in late 2006, early 2007, she lost her teaching job. And they had signed a mortgage document that maybe wasn't ideal. And at that time in the downturn, the foreclosures were really not getting to where they got later. So things were moving pretty quickly. And from the time she lost her job to the time their home was foreclosed on and they moved out was about six months flat. And they had two boys that were about the age that my kids are now. Their, uh, their older son was in second grade, their younger son was maybe in kindergarten. Uh, and I remember the day they moved out and watching those boys playing in their backyard and wondering to myself, what's the future going to be like for them? This, this, this wasn't their doing, but are these boys ever going to have another backyard of their own to call home again? And I identified with them because the same thing happened to my family when I was 15. My father had been in management at Transworld, Transworld Airlines at KCAC up north. And when Carl Icahn came in to take over the airline, my father and one of the pilots tried to block that. And when they failed, had to, had to leave the company. And um, we were caught in, in, in the downturn of the late 80s. And um, my father turned over the keys to the home that I grew up in, the only place I'd really ever known as home for, for 10 plus years. And, um, and my parents went bankrupt and we had to start over because of a job loss. And that happens to too many families. We were fortunate. We rebounded. I was lucky. I, I North Kansas City High School class of 92, uh, from there to Truman State University, uh, from there was lucky enough to get into a nationally ranked law school. And then got my first job in the law in the office of Missouri Attorney General Jay Nixon. And uh, you heard earlier, um, had, the, uh, had the opportunity to work on special prosecutions and criminal appeals there, learned the trade, helped out on trials, helped out on appellate briefs, and I'll, I'll always remember the first file that hit my desk. Um, a man had hailed a taxi cab for the purpose of killing the cab driver for whatever money he had in the cab. It turned out to be $75. He said he wanted to buy Christmas presents for his kids. Guy shot the cab driver in the back of the head twice in cold blood. And I'm not even kidding, the jury deliberated for five minutes. And, but as was his right, he filed an appeal. His appeal raised a number of technical considerations, any one of which, if they were upheld by the court, would have resulted in a new trial or an acquittal. And it was my job to write the brief to keep him behind bars, and that's where he still is today. But what registered with me about that is that my own brother had actually started working as a cab driver right around that time. 
The work that that office does matters to real Missourians. You know that. You know Chris Coster. You saw the job he did here in Cass County. You've seen what he's done as Attorney General. Uh, we've got a lot of important things we need to do as a state, um, especially through the Office of Attorney General. Prevailing wage enforcement, minimum wage enforcement, enforcing labor standards. And I, and I got to tell you, I know that the, the previous speaker was asked uh, to, to keep her remarks brief. I was thinking of maybe showing you what a Senate filibuster is like, but I'm, I'm actually saving it for when the right to work bill comes to the floor in the Senate here in a few days. There is only one way that bill is going to come to a vote in the Senate, and that's if the Republicans exercise the nuclear option. I am proud to have been the last Democrat standing against the 72-hour waiting period, which was the last time the Republicans exercised the nuclear option. And there is no way in the world they will get me to sit down voluntarily when right to work comes to the floor. I will debate it all night long. In my Senate desk, I keep a copy of War and Peace, of Atlas Shrugged, and of the State Manual, just in case, just in case anybody needs to hear a good story during a late night filibuster. Um, but getting back to the Office of Attorney General, folks, we have one of the biggest environmental catastrophes in our country right now in the state of Missouri over in Bridgeton, where a landfill is on fire and it's, it's getting close to radioactive waste. Far and away the biggest uh, case that office is handling right now. It is set for trial in early 2016. We will see what happens. Sometimes trial is not the end of the story, but the next Attorney General is literally going to have to try to put out that fire. And uh, General Costa has been working very diligently to do it, but that's something the next Attorney General will have to deal with. We have a rape kit backlog in our state that we need to get on top of. We have got to make sure that we bring rapists in our state to justice. Um, the number of consumer complaints in our state has actually increased by 50% over the last five years, uh, from about 100,000 a year to 150,000 a year. That is a challenge but we have got to hold these con artists accountable and bring them to justice. And as your Attorney General, I will work to do that. This campaign is going to be hard work. There's no question about it. We know how competitive Missouri is. We know how competitive counties like Cass are. It's going to take absolutely everything we've got. It's going to take your help. I am very proud to have some prominent local officials on my side in this fight. I am honored to have the endorsement of Senator Harold Caskey and of Kay Caskey, and Representative Joe Runyons, who's with us tonight. It is my honor to have their support in this. I would love to have yours, please. ScottSifton.com is the website. You can find us on Facebook. I would love to hook up with you and stay in touch and have you join us in this fight. It is terribly important. I look forward to joining you in turning Cass County back to blue in 2016. Thank you so much.